Joining us now here on Pittsburgh Sports Now is a guy that uh, mostly all Pitt fans are familiar with, either through Twitter or uh, through other various uh, avenues, and that's E.J. Borghetti, the communications director here for the University of Pittsburgh. And E.J., I've known you for a long time. A you're, long time, man. Yeah. Our hair used to be dark. What happened? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that, that's a different subject. But um, 22 years you've gone, you, you've been here at Pitt. Uh, Where's time gone? Where has time gone? Uh, you know, it's funny, we were talking about this, my 22nd season, but in some respects it feels like I've been here for a lifetime because I was born into this. You know, I've got pit in my DNA um, for as long as I can remember. When you think about your first conscious memories, um, <laughs> I don't know what this says about me, but my first conscious memories and family gatherings, you know, Pitt was always a part of it. So uh, certainly while professionally, this is my uh, officially my 22nd season. Um, I went to undergrad here, got my education here, uh, but really uh, I feel like I've always been here because Pitt's just been such an important uh, part of our family fabric. Some people go to work, they call it work every day, and I know that feeling. No, uh, but we'll give it up. <laughs> Some people don't enjoy their job. I, I've told people throughout the years that uh, you, if, if there was a example of somebody that is a guy that loves his job, I, I don't know that I've ever seen you probably more than a handful of times without a smile on your face. You're always, uh, what makes it, what makes it so enth enthusiastic for you? You, you just appear to come to work every day and love what you do. Well, it's not a job, it's a passion. And, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to speak to, uh, you know, young professionals or high school graduates and soon-to-be college graduates. Um, it's certainly not a fresh novel idea to say pursue your passion, but, you know, so many, so few people do it. Uh, and um, as such, uh, they end up doing things that they're not all that keen about. I, I was very blessed and very fortunate. You know, at a pretty young age, I figured out what I wanted to do and where I wanted to do it. Um, it's not just a job for me. I'm not a hired gun. I think there are a lot of people who work in PR and marketing and promotions and things like that, where it's just they're just promoting a, you know, a, a, a product. Um, I believe in the University of Pittsburgh. I believe in its mission. I believe in the people of Pitt, and certainly I believe in the people of Pitt athletics and what we're looking to achieve every day. So in that vein, um, when you have a strong belief in something, when you care about something, when you're emotionally invested in it, um, I think that uh, you just really enjoy doing it. So in that vein, I am really very, very blessed that I've had the opportunity to be able to make a career here. Um, again, I, I, I think in this American working life, a lot of people are just about getting that direct deposit at the end of the month. Uh, I'm fortunate that my rewards at Pitt go well beyond just being able to earn a living. Speaking of rewards, how rewarding has it been for you that, uh, I don't know how many people know this, but uh, your father, uh, yeah. he was a, a very accomplished uh, player here, but what's what's it meant to you to be able to be a big part of this university, following in your father's footsteps? Sure. Well, you know, um, I, I followed in his footsteps at least from where we got our education, but it means a tremendous amount because you know my father was coming out of high school in the late 1950s. Um, I wasn't alive back then, but I do know that in that particular era, not everybody went to college. Not everybody had the opportunity to continue their education. My father did. Um, in part because he got a football scholarship here. And uh, that helped him get his education. Uh, it helped him have a very rewarding career here. It helped ultimately be a springboard towards his career in dentistry. And he actually just retired just a few short years ago. But that in turn, I, you know, I wasn't a good athlete, right? I wasn't a, a, a football scholarship guy. But when it came turn, uh, it was my turn to get my college education. My father, through his Pitt experiences and through the career that Pitt led him to, I was able to come here as well. And uh, this served as a springboard for me. But just like you said, you know, my father was a player. I grew up with Pitt in the house. Um, I can, my fondest childhood memories are going up Cardiac Hill with him to the games. Uh, and it obviously made a big, big impression on me. And as such, um, it's been an honor to be able to uh, continue on and uh, work on behalf of an institution that's been so very, very important to, to our family. Over the years, since 1997, obviously you've worked, uh, you've had to work uh, closely with thousands of players. Uh, one of the players that I know that uh, special, and still is special this university, just because he's a special person, yeah. is Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, Tell me about your relationship uh, with him and what was it like 
being around here with, uh, you know, him being here and everyone yeah. realizing from the start that this, this guy was something special? Well, I think everybody knows that certainly he's a, a world-class athlete. Uh, he's a man that when he retires, as soon as he becomes eligible, he's going in a can. He's going to be a pro football Hall of Famer. He's going to go for the Daily Double. He's going to get in the College Football Hall of Fame as well. You know, truly one of the best ever. Uh, but I think what is more impressive and what is his most lasting legacy is the type of human being he is. Certainly we know that uh, he's a Walter Payton Man of the Year awardee, which is the highest recognition that an NFL player can get. It's not just about what kind of player you are, it's what type of person you are as well. Uh, very committed to community and humanitarian endeavors. Um, on a personal level, uh, I think this says a lot about Larry. He's been in the NFL for now, you know, going on 15 seasons. But uh, we have three boys, and our third son was actually born last September. And uh, it's funny, you know, his name is Connor. And when he was born, uh, our colleagues at ABC and ESPN actually said, and by the way, we'd like to congratulate the Borghetti family on the birth of their new son. Well, Larry saw that, he was somewhere and watching the game, and I immediately get a text from him. I immediately got a text from him saying, you know what, EJ, that is so cool. Congratulations to you guys. Please give Lauren my best, my wife. And um, he's got a lot going on in his life, right? He's a pro football player. He's got a lot of other interest outside of um, you know, NFL Sundays too, but he took the time to reach out and uh, extend his best wishes. And uh, you know he's never forgotten any of the people back here who, who were here when, uh, when he was a player. And uh, I'll always be, um, he's a great friend. You know, I'll always be personally indebted to him. We had, a, we had a great two years together. I often say that Larry was only here for two seasons, but he gave us 10 seasons worth of thrills and how he represented the university and how he continues to represent Pitt. So great man, uh, great player, but greater man. And I think that speaks volumes when you think about what type of player he is. Another guy that I know you were very close with, and uh, he's a legend when I say that, that's not, sometimes that word's thrown around a lot, and in this case, it's not. Uh, Bino Cook. Uh, Bino, who was my could... father's SID, by the way. You know, when my father was playing here, Bino had a cubicle up in the field house, my dad tells me, and he had a, 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 a one filing cabinet, and it's funny, times change, but uh, they really don't. All the players would invade his office to go steal pictures of themselves, right? Now we got kids coming in, like, hey, can I guess all that picture on Twitter? Can I go get that picture of myself? But, um, you know, you know, particularly this time of year, I think about him every day. I think about him every day. He was a great friend, he's a great mentor. I always liken it to, um, if anybody's ever seen the movie Almost Famous, where there's the young, fledgling, wannabe rock and roll writer, and he has his uh, mentor, his hero, Lester Banks, and he would be calling him at all hours, like, oh, God, I'm so glad you're home, you know. He was a sounding board, uh, he would get advice, he'd get harsh words, and he'd get encouragement. And that's what Vito was for me. Um, he, uh, any hour I called, he'd always pick up. Um, he would call me at all hours to talk about a game, or a result, or a score, or hey, you know, how are we gonna do this Saturday? And, um, you know, Bino was uh, tremendously important to me. And he wasn't just a professional mentor, he was a, he was a wonderful friend. And I don't like to speak about him in past tense, because I think when people make an impact on your life, they're always with you. So in a way, I kind of feel like Bino's always with me. And I think about when he's up there uh, and something's going on, I think about what he's saying and what he would tell me and the direction that he would tell me uh, to keep on going. Whether it was a difficult moment, um, you gotta keep on going. Whether it's a wonderful, great moment, hey, make sure you're hustling to take advantage of this this thing. You know, um, uh, take advantage of your successes. Make sure you're you know you're on the phone. You're reaching out to people. That you're maximizing the spotlight that you have. Um, but probably my, my favorite Bino story. Ah, oh, there's so many of them. I don't know if you can limit to one, but um, I got engaged. You know, he was always preaching to me about bachelorhood. You know, uh, I'll never get married. Don't get married. Don't get married. Of course, he never got married, right? Um, so it was uh, Christmas Eve 2005, and what did I do? I went out and got engaged uh, to uh, my then girlfriend and now wife. And uh, we were up in Mount Washington, and so of course, you know, she said yes, thank God. And uh, so then we you know, called her parents, um, called my parents. And my father gets on the phone and I say, hey, you know, Dad, Lauren, and I, we got engaged today. And he says, congratulations, how are you gonna tell Bino? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, because he knew, right? He knew what Peter always used to preach. And, uh, you know, uh, truth be told, I waited about five days <laughs> before I found the words to call him, you know. But, of course, you know, he was, um, he was uh, encouraging and uh, accepting and, 
Uh, although at one point in time, you know, he came to a uh, Pitt West Virginia basketball game a couple of months later before we after we got engaged, and uh, he would sit in my office. He would be too nervous to go out to watch it from press row or in the arena, uh, and I had a little Franklin day planner on my desk. So he sat there. We won the game. He was all excited, but he watched the entire game from my office. So in the ensuing weeks, I'd be going through my Franklin day planner, and every few days, like I'd find in his scroll, he'd be like, "Don't do it." <laughs> I'd laugh. And I'd go a few more days, like, you'll be sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he did this, he like wrote seven separate entries over the, like, the next seven weeks, just like little notes about, yo, don't do it, yo, <laughs> you'll remember what I said. Of course, that was his, that was his sense of humor, but he was, um, you know, in, in, in later days, he would always say, you know, Lauren really got the short stick by marrying you, which was his way of saying, hey, I'm happy for you. You got a great family. All right, uh, last thing here is uh, I'm gonna bring something back we used to do in the, uh, Sports showdown on KDK. We're gonna do a little, some quick rapid fire rapid for fire. EJ. Rapid fire. I always fire. love the rapid fire. I'd be up, you know. I would say this is about the uh, the old Sunday night show. That's the only. Sometimes I wouldn't watch it to get my heart rate up. I'd be like, I really gotta sleep. I'm gonna watch this show. They're gonna get me all fired up and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. So let's have at it. All right, uh, Pit fans will enjoy this. Uh, I'll be as rapid as I can. I may need to elaborate though. Uh, <laughs> most exciting and most heartbreaking game you've uh, been a part of? The most exciting. Gosh, there are so many. It's so hard to pick the most exciting. Um, you know, I just walked past this picture, uh, uh, so I'm going to say this one. Clemson 2016, although I could probably pick about 10 others. I'll say this. We went in, we came up with a tough loss against Miami the week before. Everybody's saying we were going to go down there and just be cannon fodder. Kids believed. They had resolve. They went out there. They gave the eventual national champion their only loss of the year. Grit, determination. Love that moment because of what it meant for our program, but most importantly because of an example of people believing what everybody on the outside didn't believe, and we had a great, great result. Uh, most heartbreaking, um, you know, I'm going to go back a little bit. This one always sat with me. 2002 backyard brawl. Okay, um, we were sitting there. We, we thought we were, you know, Gator Bowl was on the line. Um, we outgained West Virginia. Uh, we were moving the ball up and down the field. Turned the ball in the, over in the red zone multiple times and ended up losing by seven. That's one that will always sit with me because I always thought that uh, we were the better team, but sometimes you need a little bit more than that. We didn't quite execute to our fullest potential. We ended up dropping that one. Favorite road trip to go to? Oh, West Virginia. You know, I love rolling down 79, man. And, you know, you go past Washington, and then all of a sudden you look up and there's this overpass right before you get into uh, West Virginia. And there was always, always, always a bed sheet hanging uh, with a bunch of expletives about Pitt. And I'd always think to myself, I said, it's time. This is it. This is the game. I always love I would be disappointed if that bed sheet with all those words weren't on there. You know, L love that road trip. Game that gets, uh, that gets your blood uh, going the most. Oh, jeez. You know, uh, I am first and foremost a fan. I'm a professional, and i got to kind of get that, you know, dialed back and, 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 and got to be measured and you know you got to you got to perform your job functions you can't let emotion you know take uh, uh, to control of you but you know uh, this is going to be a cheap out but you know every game gets my blood going man and I've always told um, Celeste my longtime colleague and great friend I said you know the day we walk in here into the press box and our adrenaline isn't pumping for a game then you know what it's time to hang it up because you know we're not going to be all that we can be but um, you know, every Saturday does, and uh, and I mean that. Uh, I, I'm excited. I can't wait to be there on Saturday for Albany. I'm going to go in and feeling just the way I felt 22 years ago, and be like, hey, you know what? I'm working for Pitt football, man. We're about to play some ball, and you know, and I get to have this, you know, this front row seat to watch it. Um, so, and I, I genuinely, that is a genuine answer. I think if you ask my wife the way I'm like a caged tiger on Saturday morning, she would uh, she would tell you that's the truth. You've watched a lot of players, most underrated player that you thought was really, really good that maybe didn't get the... This is going to be a surprising answer to that, but I don't think Rod Rutherford's career is appreciated enough. Um, Four-year contributor, started out in a slash role, of course. You know, he was playing quarterback a little bit, but played receiver, of course, famously had the only touchdown in the 2000 Penn State game, was a kick returner, um, did it all. Heck of an athlete. Credit to Walt Harris, who, you know, everybody was clamoring for him to play as a true freshman in 99, but Walt redshirted him because he knew he would benefit from it. But his two years as a starter in 1999 and two, uh, I'm sorry, in um, 2002 and 2003, he was outstanding. You know, got his sea legs at the beginning of the 2002 season, but a month in, he played lights out. And everybody would say, well, you know, look at all the weapons he had to throw to. You know, Rod and Larry were an outstanding connection, and they made the fade an art form. And yes, Larry could go up a great, you know, Hall of Fame ball skills. 
But Rod always put that ball where it needed to be, where only Larry could get it. Um, I still think that Rod, as a quarterback, not just an athlete, uh, uh, but I think as a quarterback, uh, sometimes is underrated, underappreciated. Great career here, great final two years where he was an all Big East quarterback when he was facing a league that had Miami and Virginia Tech in it at the time. Um, love Rod Rutherford, and I'll never forget the day he committed to Pitt. Uh, because we know, I think it came down to Michigan State and Penn State, and Pitt was there. Everybody thought, and this is before Twitter, right? <laughs> Everybody, this is before Twitter. I was tuned into 1250, the WTAE uh, radio affiliate. Like, I knew he had his press conference at Perry Traditional Academy. Everybody thought he was going to go to Penn State. I'm sitting there listening, listening, listening. Then the sports uh, uh, update came on at 20 after the other hour and said, Rod Rutherford, Perry Traditional Academy, is staying in Pittsburgh. I yelled. I, it was like I just won the lottery. I went sprinting through Pitt Stadium to Walt Harris's office. So, and that was such an important commit at a time where um, we, we were getting off the mat. So Rod is a person who I always hold in a special regard, and I don't think his career is appreciated enough. Last uh, rapid fire question here is. Uh I've ruined this, it. This, it's not rapid fire. No, I'm like, I'm like no, Zeiss. People, I'm pit, pulling a Paul Zeiss, man. Well, I'm ruining and, the format of the show. I'm talking too much. Well, if you do that, then Pitt fans are going to love you. Everyone, <laughs> everyone loves Zeisser. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. And right. I uh, Best uh, offense and defensive player you've watched? That is a tough one because, you know, hey, I have three boys. If you like tell me, you know, hey, who's your favorite son? Um, and, and I can't do that because I love them all, and I love them all for different reasons. Um, you know, uh, hesitant to answer this one. Uh, I'll give kind of some uh, some half answers here. Um, you know, I think when you watch Larry Fitzgerald here, you know you were seeing an all-timer with special gifts that only God could give. But he also had a work ethic uh, uh, that only his parents could give. Um, special, special talent, and uh, that's proven obviously through 15 seasons in the National Football League. The man's going to have a bust. Uh, can't wait to go see him get his induction in Canton with that, with that gold jacket. Uh, hard not to talk about him a, a, as an all-timer. Chris LaSalle and I talk about this all the time. During our tenure, you know, he started in like May of 97. I started in June of 97. During our time here, we've seen a number of guys who are going to end up in Canton. And we talk about Larry. You know, um, we talk about Darrell Rivas, who just by stepping on the field, shut down half of the field. You know, remarkable talent. You know, he's going to end up in Canton. Um, you know, uh, staying on the defensive side of the ball, you know, I saw him this morning. You know, I remember Hugh Green as a kid, but my recollections aren't that vivid. When I was watching Aaron Donald in his senior year, I thought to myself, this is what it was like in 1980 watching Hugh Green dominate. Everybody knew, hey, we're going to run away from Hugh, but Hugh ended up making the tackle. Hey, we're going to throw two, three guys, you know, at Aaron Donald. And somehow, Aaron Donald ended up in the backfield. That's an all-time talent. And uh, through his first few years in the National Football League, NFL Defensive Player of the Year, you know, this is a guy who's also trending towards Can. And, um, you know, I'm going to, you know, LaShawn McCoy, a couple more thousand-yard seasons. He's going to be at 12,000. He's going to be in the top 10 of all-time leading rushers. That's a ticket, you know, to Can. So there's, there's just been, um, I've been blessed. Um, I have been at a front row seat to watch some exceptional, tremendous talents. And uh, that they're wearing blue and gold means so much and that I've had some small role to, uh, to, to work on their behalf and help promote them uh, is um, you know, something I'll, I'll, I'll always feel blessed about. And I would say this, you know, we talked about old world talents, old world person who again, I had a front row seat, not only for his accomplishments, but also for his struggles and challenges, um, James Conner. You know, it's one of the reasons why we named our third son Connor. Uh, my wife always liked the name, but we made sure that there was an ER in the end because, you know, he's the type of human being who overcomes things. You know, came here as a, uh, I remember people when he committed here, I remember reading Panther, I was like, yeah, who's this guy from here? Wait, 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 defensive end, all that kind of stuff. Comes here, becomes a tremendous tailback, becomes a tremendous ambassador for the University of Pittsburgh, becomes a tremendous ambassador for people who are trying to overcome a dreaded disease. You know, he's a hero. Um, if after he left Pitt, if he never played another down of football, I'd still feel the same way about being an all-timer. Um, not only an all-timer as a player, but he's an all-time person, and he inspires every day. And um, I know when Connor grows up and has a little bit more of a, um, an idea, some of an idea of where his name comes from, I think he's going to be like, you know what, that's pretty cool. And he's going to try to live up to that example, too. Last question here. Uh, obviously, 
Coach Narduzzi has expectations high. Sure. Uh, things are building up here. They're going on. Yeah. Uh, they're moving up here. Yeah. Uh, when Pitt finally makes the college football playoffs, how pumped is EJ, EJ Borghetti going to be? I'm pumped to walk in here every day. But how, I mean that, in but particular, but, if they but, made that, but, you're. But, you know, uh, uh, Pat dreams big and he works big. You know, it's one thing to have high aspirations, and Pat does, but he also works his tail off to make those aspirations a reality. And uh, when we meet those goals, um, it is going to be a great day. It is going to be a great day because I know it will be a collective effort of so many people. Um, uh, uh, Pat Narduzzi, Chancellor, our athletic director, Heather, uh, the kids, uh, the kids' parents, the staff, you know, the people behind the scenes, um, uh, you know, uh, like myself. Um, you know, people like Crystal Sal and Bob Junko, so many great people here. That's what we're working so hard every day towards. It's not just about Saturday. And um, when you work so hard and so long, and when ultimately, you know, you cross through that finish line tape of reaching that goal, it's a tremendous, tremendous moment. And, and that's what we're working hard for every day. And uh, I'll tell you what, I always put my money on Pat Narduzzi because he's driven, he's passionate, he's committed to people, and... Um, I'm thrilled he's here because he's a pit man. He, he, he is, I, I, I told him, I said, you know what? You may not be a pit man by education or by birth, um, but you are a pit man. And um, it's all about your dreams, man. It's all about your dreams. But it's also about your, the work you put behind achieving your dreams. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see our goals become a reality. But in the meantime, we're not going to think about that. We're just going to try to win the day. Um, but I'm honored to be here at Pitt. And Mike, I gotta tell you, you and I go back a long way. So long, like I said, we were very young men back then. You know, I don't think we were married and we didn't have kids. Now we're married, now we have kids, and it's so rewarding. But, uh, um, you know, it's a very gratifying thing to not only work with these people, but you know, I think about friends in the media, and there's always this thing about, oh, it's so combative, and this and that. And you know, God knows we, we, we have our go-arounds, but you know, that's been part of the gratifying um, uh, rewards of, of this career, you know. Having friends and colleagues who you work hard together with every day, certainly I count you among that, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate what you do to uh, cover us every day, you and Mr. Alan Saunders. All right, EJ, we appreciate the time, and uh, we'll see you at Hinesfield this Saturday, uh, Pitt Albany, 3.30. 3.30, be there. I look forward to it. Thanks, guys.